Commanders have made their move. They acquire Marshawn Lattimore earlier today. And uh, I thought we'd talk to uh, our guest now, later in the week perhaps, as he's going to be calling the game Sunday for CBS. But I was like, who could we talk to about a defensive back move? How about Charles Davis, NFL Network, and of course CBS. He'll be with Ian Eagle and Evan Washburn on the call this week. And Charles, always great to talk to you, especially when we got breaking news to talk about, my friend. Well, you know, it's funny, Craig. I don't. There's, there's not often I get called on breaking news. Usually, I'm usually the news breaks, everything happens, and then someone tells me about it later. <laughs> so this is really kind of cool to be on the front end of something like this. But it is funny because earlier today. I was asked about Washington and, you know, what kind of move to strengthen this team. And I said, corner would be the obvious first place for me. I don't think it's an original thought, but if they could get a corner and head into the last part of their schedule with another corner, I think that'd be a big help for their team. No doubt about it. And Adam Peters, uh, who doesn't really say a whole lot uh, to anybody, it had certainly come out that they were in the market for one. And they get arguably one of the best ones on the market in Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, the Saints obviously looking to, to get out of a bit of a cap situation. From the Washington side of it, like how big is it? And and this is, I think, the big thing that I, I want to try to understand with you, Charles, is that drop off for Benjamin St. Juice from number one down to number two corner. By putting him now on number twos and letting Lattimore be a true number one that he is, and then the effect down even farther, Mikey Sainer still getting to go back into the slot. What does this do for Washington's defense? It gets everyone in the right spot, in my humble opinion. You know, it's just one person from the outside. But Benjamin St. just has given them everything he's got, and it's made some plays for them. He also is probably ranking in there pretty well on defensive pass interference calls. He's not a sprinter, you know, and you're going to end up getting those sprinters out there if you're dealing with wide receiver one. Not saying wide receiver two all of a sudden goes down to a bunch of slugs, but you know what I'm talking about. I think him going to two takes some pressure off. Every player wants to be one. Let's be honest about it, Craig. You know that, right? Of course. I want to be CB1. I want to be WR1, BRB1. But deep down inside, they also know who they are. And I don't think this hurts him one bit. CB2 on a contending team in the NFL is a really good spot considering we throw the ball 60 plus percent of the time. So you're going to get plenty of action. You've got a legit one in, in Lattimore now. St. Juice is playing well for them overall, goes to two. And St. still was drafted really to be a nickel. That's who he is. That's what he plays. That's how we all, that's why we all fell in love with him at Michigan. He gets back to his natural spot. To me, it just strengthens the team overall and makes things easier for each player because they're in their natural place. Charles Davis, CBS with us. He'll be on the call this weekend. Commanders and Steelers. And joining us in response to the breaking news from earlier today that the Commanders have acquired Marshawn Lattimore. Um, uh, Charles, what do you make of Lattimore, the player, from your years now of watching him in New Orleans? Always liked him a bunch. Um, when I was when I was working at a different network, I ended up seeing the Saints a lot more. Okay? And... During that time, that's when the Saints were perennial playoff teams, right? They were they were in the position where bad calls might have kept them from a, another Super Bowl appearance, <laughs> you know, things of that nature. But they were playing big games, and the first playoff game I did was Saints Eagles in New Orleans, and he had a big hand in that ball game. Alshon Jeffrey was riding high for Philadelphia. That was the second year of Nick Folk replacing Carson Wentz. And down the stretch, Lattimore had to make plays because the ball was coming his way with Jeffrey. But he was like that throughout the entire game. He is a true cornerback one. He embraces it. He will be physical when he you know needs and wants to be. He can run with everyone. He just has a knack for playing the position. But he has a bigger knack for understanding what it takes to play the position down in and down out. In other words, he has to beat on a route or two. It's not going to be the end of the world for him. You know what I'm saying? He's going to come back and make the play that, that works. And you and I both know that you're not going on the volume of catches and things of that nature, although it's fun when you say, hey, blank this guy or only caught one ball or whatever. Will you make the play when you absolutely have to have it? And he's had a knack for doing that when things were good in New Orleans. 
The thing that when I think of a, a current Dan Quinn, Adam Peters player, the number one trait is competitiveness. And when I think of Marshawn Lattimore, right. that's the number one thing I think about uh, from the fights to Mike Evans yeah. on down to the, the cleaner play, <laughs> if you will. Um, my my yeah. question would be mid-season without a training camp. Like he's he's been a pro for a long time, a really high level pro for a long time. I also think that like in terms of the character, I'm guessing Adam Peters made a call to Terry McLaurin and or Noah Brown who played with them at Ohio State. Sure. Like they, they know who he is but we've seen players have trouble at all positions adapting to new schemes especially mid-season it's one of the reasons why trades are not as popular in the nfl as they are in other sports what do you make of how Lattimore fits with what you've seen washington do considering you had them a couple weeks ago and are obviously studying them again this week well you bring up such good points because that's the reason you know football is hard to just plug in although it's very strange, right? We, week in and week out, we see guys come in with limited practice, will start and play, and you're like, how are they doing that, <laughs> right? So, so you're getting people who, you know, they're going to talk you through things, right? You're gonna, they're going to adapt to what you did before. Hey, we call, oh, you call that brown, we call it blue, you know, that sort of a deal and get them going. But as a corner, probably less to worry about adapting than in most places. Play a man playing zone. Cover two is cover two. Cover three is cover three. Cover four is cover four. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Almost universally across the board now, do you have your calls where you're going to mix and match when you're doing cover six, cover eight, where it's quarters, quarters, half, or half, quarters, quarters? You know, yes, you'll have some of those, right? You'll have that, you know, hey, we'll play two catch here. But for the most part, the technique, the technique, the biggest thing is just adapting to the locker room, to the people, the meeting times change of city, where am I going to live now? Is my family taken care of behind me? Those are the things that people don't think about. We just think about getting them on the field. They have a lot more going through their head than just that. But coming to play corner, um, we're playing man, Marshawn. Got it. <laughs> yeah, no, that part that part's easy when it's one on one. I think the the area that Washington has gotten got this year a couple times that they're still trying to iron out, which has been way better the last six weeks, in fairness to them, is some of the communications in man where they have to pass stuff off. How hard is sure. it to learn uh, your teammates? And I mean, I know it's something that Joe Witt Jr. coaches and preaches about communication yeah. given, received, acknowledged. He's got like seven steps to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So I'm sure that will be preached this week. But as someone who's yeah played with different guys in, in a back end of a secondary uh, in your career, how hard is it to adapt and learn that communication on the fly in just a couple of days practice? Yeah, it's not easy. It, it, it's something that just simply is going to take time. And you hope that the issues are minimal as you learn and adapt. Now, I'm going to give you something that's going to tell – there's something in my head that I think the time will be cut down, and you know why. Because he's being traded to a different city – and he's coming to a place, and he's not going to go looking for a house, right? He's not going to go and try and, you know, really adapt into any place else. He's going to go find a place to live that's going to be close to the facility, and he's going to be 24-7 ball. Yep. It's going to cut the time down. He's, his friends are going to be his teammates. Now, he may have family in D.C. area. I don't know this. But for the most part, you're usually going, and it's you. So what are you going to do all day? And especially he's going to look up and say, I'm coming from a two and seven team to a seven and two team. He knows what winning is like. He knows what it feels like. He knows how good it is. He has a chance to do it again. It changes your whole outlook and your whole deal. So I think the learning curve will be cut down because he'll be totally immersed in it. It's like learning to speak a foreign language. You'll learn it a lot quicker if you go live in that country for a month. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, Charles Davis with us for another minute here on the Hoffman Show. Nice enough to spend some time on a busy day, uh, not only for him, but around the NFLs. we got all these different deals happening, including Marshawn Lattimore to D.C. But, Charles, more generally speaking, as you've uh, – obviously, you had this team a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you're starting to prepare for him again. What has impressed you the most or, or maybe one or two bullet points about – the commanders going seven and two, the way they've turned the franchise around and, and all the things that are seemingly heading the right direction here in DC. The maturity level of this whole organization. Yeah, I said it, the whole organization. Yeah. Because you know, you covered it for forever there. Never can you really put those words into the, the, the organization, maturity, professionalism, doing things the right way. I think a lot of that started to change 
in recent years. You know, I think people have tried it. But now I think it's really starting to take root. Adam Peters is the GM, your brand new owner, obviously. Now empowering Peters as the GM. Dan Quinn's second go round as a head coach. He hasn't changed who he is. He's still DQ. The messages are very similar that I see in Washington that I saw in Atlanta. But I think he knows how to deliver them in maybe a little bit different manner to where they might be more long lasting. That makes any sense? Yeah, no doubt. Because does. Sometimes, sometimes your slogans and things, you know what I'm saying, right? And sometimes they become bumper stickers. Mm hmm. Those two, this is what we're doing. Well, I think this stuff is rooting in with his team. I, I see it in the speech of the players. I saw a Jaden Daniels interview the other day, and he said it starts with the brotherhood. And I was like, yeah, he plays for DQ. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but, it, but, it's, but it's not cheesy for him. In fact, it's something they take pride in. And that's what you're seeing with this team. So I'm seeing that maturity coupled with a youthful enthusiasm. And when I say youthful, I don't care if he's a 10-year vet or a rookie. They're all playing that and exuding that. They like getting to work. They like being around each other. They like playing the game. And I thought the win in New York against the Giants sent a nice message to the rest of the league about how this team approaches things. A few years ago, this team winning the Hail Mary and going on the road the next week, they would have gotten beat. Make, make no mistake about it. They, they would have gotten beat. They wouldn't have been able to handle it. But he has a plan. He has a system. He has a way of doing things. Never deviated. And you know it by now, Craig, right? They oh, came yeah. right in for tell, tell the Truth Monday. Every single right? Monday. Every single Monday. It's not going to waver. It's not going to change. And, yes, we're going to tell the truth, meaning did you or did you not make the play? Why did you? Why did you not? Let's be honest about it. Let's not kind of tiptoe around it. We're not going to let things slide. We're not going to do that. And by the time you ramp up, when's, when's competition? Is that Wednesday? Competition yeah, competition Wednesday. Wednesday. Yep, yep. Competition Wednesday. You're going to get after it. And know what it reminds me of a little bit, although it's not quite as dramatic because you can't do it that way in the NFL. It's almost like we were back in high school. Did you have a high school wrestling team? Uh, I was not yeah, on it, but yeah, we had it. But you had it. You probably heard from your from your buddies, hey, we're wrestling off for, for the slot at 55 for this weekend. Yep, yep. Right? Every week you had to prove yourself. You had to earn your spot. You didn't just get to get it and keep it for the year. Well, it's not quite as dramatic in the NFL. It doesn't work that way. But if you're teetering and someone else is coming along, it can happen. And DQ is going to keep you on your toes that way. And that team handled that Hail Mary with maturity. And yeah, it was a little more workmanlike against the Giants. Every weekend it's not going to be fireworks. But they found a way to grit it out, grind it out and make sure a team that was inferior to them did not trip them up. To me, that's very impressive. No doubt about it. And all you have to do is look around the league. And every single week, especially division games, I mean, I've, I, the amount of bad losses I saw when I was on the beat, I just hated going to New York because I just knew, like, there's this Giants team's not any good that Washington's about to play. Now that Washington was great in a lot of those years, but uh, you just right. knew that was a house of horrors. And they went in there, they did their thing, they came home, they got the dub, and uh, then they're preparing for Pittsburgh. And that's where Charles, uh, you'll, you'll probably hear him next Sunday on your television, uh, Commander Steelers, 1 o'clock on CBS. Charles, always Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for your time and perspective, and uh, I'll see you Sunday in the booth. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thanks for having me on. You know, this is exciting times. Not when you're dealing a player like Lattimore in New Orleans. It's not exciting. <laughs> no. that, means, that, that, means, that means, you know, things aren't going well, and here's the rebuild. But when you're in the hunt and you're trading for players of that caliber, you're telling your fan base, we believe in this team and we believe we can do big things. And I think that's pretty cool. No doubt about it. Thanks, Charles. Charles, be good. Hey, this is DA and you're listening to the Hoffman show on the team 980 and the Odyssey. Edge.